This is John from the Ringlord. I am demonstrating our titanium and niobium anodizing setup. Uh, in addition to the box that you've just received from the Ringlord, you should also have a non-conductive waterproof container, uh, half full of water. Um, another container, doesn't matter what it's made of, that's full of water for, for rinsing. Uh, some standard dishwashing gloves and this magic powder is TSP, uh, trisodium phosphate. It's available at, at any hardware store, typically used for washing walls before, before painting. Okay, so first, just unboxing this. We have a stainless steel anode. And it's, yes, it's supposed to be bent. We'll get to that. You just put that into your into your tank that's going to have the TSP in it. A titanium cathode, which will be hooking up to the power supply. Some color-coded leads and our power cord. Hooking this up is really easy. We'll just plug it in. And I guess we'll turn it off for the for the initial setup. Uh, now it is important that nothing ever go into the water except titanium and niobium. Um, the only exception to that is this stainless steel plate, and things touching the stainless steel plate are not an exception. So it's so that this this connection should be above the water line, never below the water line. And the main reason for that is this this will corrode like crazy if it's if it's below the uh, below the water line, and anything else that's not touching the stainless steel plate will cause your anodizing to to not work quite right. Uh, so we just plug the, the black lead into the the one on the far side that says negative, and your red lead, of course, into the red. And then you just connect your alligator clip to this titanium electrode. Um, and it's probably not a bad idea to have a glove on this this hand. This hand, basically, this this electrode or this this cathode will uh, will be at your operating voltage, so anywhere from zero to 120 volts. Um, I guess most people are sort of uncomfortable with electricity, and in that case, it's good to have some insulation. Like you can wrap this with electrical tape or duct tape, or wear a glove. Okay, now just to turn this thing on, you have to, it's a two-step process. First, you turn on the power supply, and then there's this run-stop button. Which, as soon as you hit it, you'll see the voltage will jump up to to the set voltage. So the first number is your actual voltage, second number is your set voltage, and then the bottom your actual current and your maximum current. Um, basically just zip in this, we'll, we'll change, your, change your voltage, and in general you want to sort of start low and work your, work your way up. So we just add a little bit of TSP to this water. Glove on, and it's not real critical how much. This, for example, is way too much. I'm just going to crumble, sort of shave a little bit off. All the the TSP does is help your water to conduct electricity. So it's it's not used up at all. You don't have to worry about changing your solution um, in order to keep it working. The only time you need to change your solution is when it starts um, getting a little bit mucky. And trisodium phosphate helps things like algae grow. So it normally I I change it about about once every sort of three or four weeks kind of kind of range. Okay, a few safety things before we touch, or before we to touch on before we get started. Uh, 
Normally, I put a plastic mesh basket in to help protect, to sort of isolate the stainless steel from the titanium. Anytime we touch the titanium to the stainless steel, we get a spark, the voltage drops down to zero. Um, so in, in general, you want, it, doesn't, like it doesn't hurt the power supply at all, but anytime you touch the stainless steel, you're not going to be anodizing. Um, if you're using a basket, you can sort of dump a, like a small amount into the basket and then just sort of use the, the uh, cathode to stir. Or alternately, you can sort of string them onto a, to the cathode as I've shown. Uh, I have it set to 45 volts, which is going to give me a blue. Basically, as I dip in, it will get darker. So you can see sort of bronze to purple at that end. And now we've got sort of what we would call a, a cobalt blue. And I can rinse and dump into my mixed container. And really that's it. Now, now after this, it's all just sort of playing with, with, with getting, getting the right color. You can anodize finished items just as well as the individual rings. The main thing to remember when anodizing finished items is absolutely nothing in the, in the solution other than titanium or, um, or niobium. One's like a stainless steel lobster clasp and it will sort of work, but what, what, what you'll find is if I put stainless steel rings, for example, on here, they just, they will bubble like crazy and any titanium or niobium around them will, will not anodize. Um, you'll notice as I, I'll go for a green, you'll notice as I start, the current will jump up and then the current will drop down. You can watch the current for sort of an indication of when you're done. That's sort of the that's sort of the scientific way of doing it. Or of course you can just watch your watch your rings. So when your rings turn green, you're done. Or when the current drops off to practically zero, you're also you're also done. And, and the real beauty of having your own anodizer is the spectrum of colors is limited in in that like you, you can't for example you can't get red but when it when it's going from teal to green you can get any shade that's imaginable anywhere between teal and green so where we just sell one one green that we call green if you're anodizing your own rings you can make 100 various shades of green